long time no see. Nowadays, panda bears are endangered. But let's see how well the antivirus product is fighting. This is a full review of Panda Cloud Antivirus, and you are watching the PC Security Channel. First of all, we see that the user interface has matured very nicely in 2016. I like the color variations and basic layout, which is quite functional and uh, even customizable. If we go into the advanced settings, we find that the layout kind of remains the same. The important options, behavioral blocking, behavioral analysis are both turned on and detection of potentially unwanted programs is enabled as well. Once again, this is all in default settings. I haven't changed anything. This is how it comes from the factory. Process monitor is turned on as well. It'll be interesting to see how big a role that actually plays in this test. Right now we can see that we have 50 process, seven accessing the internet and uh, no medium or high threat level processes and nothing has been blocked. One more setting you probably want to check out is the Panda News. You probably want to disable it if you don't want annoying pop-ups on the right hand corner of the screen. Now that our product is ready, let's get started with the links. We have um, really small links today as you can see, but uh, they're no less potent, so let's get started. I have installed Panda's security toolbar. We'll see if that helps in the web prevention test. Here goes nothing. First one is blocked immediately by their web blocking service, which is good to see. That used to be one of the distinguishing features of Panda. Really good uh, web blocking signatures. Let's proceed to the next file. It's a zip file and is let through. Now let's try and open it. It seems like it cannot be opened. I guess Panda might have blocked that one. I didn't get any alert though. Let's take a look at their UI. Interesting, I don't see any threats blocked. Maybe that just was a broken archive. Let's try out the third link. This is a script and um, I don't know if it's supposed to drop a file or something, but it wasn't blocked. We'll see if anything made its way into the system. Here's link number four. And once again, I'm pretty sure this website drops a file. As you can see, it's kind of uh, hogging up the browser and we're stuck. The page has stopped responding and I'm pretty sure in the background it's doing something malicious. Nothing reported by Panda so far. And now even Panda is struggling to start. We're just into the first half of the link test and things are already starting to get messy. No threats blocked. Let's see if process monitor has something. Nothing flagged yet. Now for those of you who might be thinking why I didn't show you that the product was up to date at the beginning of this video it's because it does not have any update options since it's a cloud-based program it is automatically kept up to date all the time but I did install it right now so it obviously if it does have any offline module it should be up to date now let's try to move on with the next link if we can that is The system is extremely slow to respond right now, so maybe before we move on we should investigate. Alright, as you can see, Internet Explorer is taking up 87.4% of the CPU, now 979 This is definitely not normal behavior. The script that's running in the background, I don't know what it's doing, but it's not good. Here's the next threat and this one 
Hmm, it used to be alive, but now it's dead. Let's try the next URL. Let's try running this one. While this is downloading, I think we can try out the next link as well, which is the final one. All right, final link, here we go. Let's execute the last link too. Let's go ahead and run these files one by one now. They both seem to have passed through the web filter. But it seems like Panda may have blocked it. At least this one. But I did not get any alert. Let's try running the other file. And it cannot be accessed either. I'm guessing Panda blocked these two. But needless to say, things are not looking too good. Okay, so finally I get to see the alert for the last two items. It did take a while, but now it says two threats neutralized. So the last two were caught by the signatures. And Panda is going to annoy me until I provide it my email address. As if we don't have enough trouble on the system. Since this exploit or whatever seems to be pretty interesting, I mean I'm a huge fan of random code like this. Dash A W V mod or percentage E I Y. So exciting, isn't it? So I'm gonna go ahead and read this entire script. No, just kidding. I'll let this thing run for a while and then we'll do our second opinion scans. Very interestingly, none of our second opinion scanners have found any threats. As you can see, Malwarebytes did not identify anything. Zamana and Hitman Pro have both flagged the Panda security toolbar as malware, but apart from that, we don't see anything. That's kind of odd, considering we did see quite a lot of weird behavior. Anyway, let's proceed to the next part of the test, that is the file detection test. So I'm going to disable Panda Cloud Antivirus for a moment. There's no easy way to do that. In here we have 500 threats. All of these are pretty fresh, I just grabbed them today. So let's go ahead and do a right click scan. It seems like for some reason the Panda scan interface is kind of stuck at 1% showing only two files to have been scanned. But it does seem to be working in the background. Because we're seeing 107 files in quarantine and 152 threats blocked. The user interface does get pretty slow and unresponsive. I think this program could definitely use some optimization. And these are issues that I've encountered in past versions of Panda Cloud or Free Antivirus before, so they really haven't made much progress there. If anybody from Panda is watching this, there are some bugs to fix. The context menu scan is finally complete. It took almost forever, if not longer. Let's see what's left in the folder. It seems like we have 128 items left, which is a pretty high number, so... I think I should do another right-click scan, although... I don't feel brave enough to do it, seeing how long it takes. Okay, I have to muster up the courage. Here we go again. And this time it's stuck at 26%. This scan user interface definitely needs fixing. Finally, we have 46 files that are left, and uh, three of these are still detected, but they cannot be resolved. That's all we're going to get. Any subsequent scans also show the same results. And uh, there are 45 files left in the folder, so this is the final figure I'm going to use to calculate the detection ratio. 91% which is pretty good considering the age of these files. Now let's re-enable Panda's shields and uh, get to the grueling part, which is where we actually run 
the unknown pieces of malware. So everything's turned on. I'm counting on their zero-day component or their behavioral blocking and process monitor to take care of things here. It seems like their process monitor has found something, but these are the files that were blocked by the signature, so nothing extra. Now let's execute these files and see how Panda's zero-day defenses cope with them. This one was blocked by their file antivirus. Let's keep going. We have quite a few files to execute. At least some of these should work. Here's some kind of setup wizard. I think it's going to bundle some adware. Hmm, this is interesting. Guess what our adware is? Norton Antivirus 2014. I'm not going to install Norton. Let's see if it bundles anything else. Another detection by Panda. Once again, the file is caught. I guess that's that. This is the final file that we're going to run. Now we're just going to wait and uh, see what happens. So after letting the system run for a few minutes, I'm going to reboot it, run CCleaner, and then we'll get to our second opinion scan results. It looks like something else was neutralized as a PUP. So maybe it blocked the malicious part of this uh, installer. Our second opinion scanners are done, so let's take a look at what they found. Malware bytes. Two potentially unwanted registry key modifications. All right, let's move on. Hitman Pro. Apart from flagging Panda's toolbar, there's a new registry key modification, and more importantly, a couple of suspicious files which are active. Now, keep in mind, I do remove the malware folder before doing the second opinion scans, but these files could not be removed because they were active in memory. Zamana is pretty much the same story as Hetman Pro flags the active files. As you can see, if we try to delete these items, we just can't do it. So, what's the final verdict for Panda Free Cloud Antivirus? It didn't do bad, actually, but um, it feels more like a beta product. There are some issues that need to be ironed out. But if you can deal with the glitchy scan engine, it's probably an okay product. I will have more tests in the future, maybe one comparing this to some of the other free AVs that are out there. This is all I have for now. This video really tested my patience. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please hit the like button if you did, and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you have been following this channel for a while, you know that no one review is enough to make up your mind when it comes to choosing your security product. You should look at a lot of them. And you need to follow a product over months, over years, before you can actually come to a proper conclusion. So check out some other reviews as well, and I will be following up with more videos. Stay tuned for that. And as I always say, Stay informed, stay secure.